Right, so let me start by saying that I'm not really a guest. I was born here. I was born here and lived here for quite a while, but right now I'm physically located in Russia, uh, in the uh, Eurasian Economic Union. Uh, so uh, I represent the Tochne Sila hmm. company. It operates uh, on the entire Eurasian space, and we are working, we supply equipment and we automate the production of steel, uh, steel uh, elements, steel structures. So let me go full screen. Точно сил is precise force, uh, word for word rendition. Just a second. Right, so once again, I represent the precise force, Tochne Sila company, that uh, it has a subsidiary, it has an office in Minsk. We also have the information of uh, manufacturing facilities for uh, drilling machines, which is used in various steel uh, constructs. I will be talking now about the capabilities that are uh, the, the, the industrial capabilities of the operators that are here uh, in the audience today. You know, automated punch, uh, punching materials, uh, instruments, they can work without software, without transportation systems. They can work on the tooling for, with uh, quick cut steel, uh, fast cutting steel, uh, with various uh, limitations. However, the potential that is uh, part of this machinery, of, this, of these tools, can be exhausted and can be used to 100% capacity with, with the use of our software. So, again, I would like to say that we cooperate with FeeChip in terms of uh, marketing of, uh, of pr production of uh, steel structures. FeeChip is the global leader in this area. The output of this company is as much as all the other competitors put together. So, FeeChip is 50% of the market. It's indeed uh, the engine or the driving force behind this industry, FeeChip. Now, to make it a bit clearer for you guys, why would we need these metal structures and why would we need this software? <clears throat> I will talk about the trends. I will talk about the trends that we observe in the current year. The first trend is a reduction of costs, so cutting, the cutting down in costs. All the companies globally to operate at maximum profit, they are striving to drive the costs down. Yet in some markets, uh, there are some average levels of costs that tend to dominate. Uh, of course, the price also matters. So when there is uh, bids uh, being, f being filed, when there are uh, transactions and deals being, uh, being uh, made, uh, the producers and the manufacturers all, all only proceed from the margin that uh, helps them keep their head above the water. So this average margin in the market, average profit margin in the market is something that helps uh, manufacturers survive, basically. If some company operates with lower costs, with lower level of costs, it has the, some money to spare, some money to invest, this additional profit. So these are the kind of tools or these are the kind of efficiency bits or efficiency elements uh, that can be taken care of uh, through the use of advanced machinery and software. As we believe here, we believe that uh, we need to reduce the uh, cost of labor in the cost of the product. We're talking about automation. So it comes as no secret that the amount of manual labor uh, is going down uh, in the final cost of the product. In the final price of the product. So this, this is something for us to remember as well, because until until recently everybody knew that the salary in Belarus is not as high as in neighboring countries. And the workforce is a bit cheaper than in the adjacent countries. However, the labor productivity in the neighboring countries, in the economic blocks, is growing so quickly and so fast that this uh, cheap workforce is no longer a factor that can contribute to lower costs. So let me give you a brief example of how a Moldovan uh, client went to Austria to sell the metal structures. So uh, I asked, did you, uh, did you succeed? No, he said, they, they can do it cheaper. The Austrians can do it even cheaper. But Moldova is even cheaper workforce than Belarusian workforce. 
So what I'm saying is uh, the mobility and the flexibility that the Austrians have achieved with the use of this technology is uh, beating the lower workforce uh, competition from Moldova, which is not that technologically advanced. The global competition, this is a reality of 2017, increase of economic cooperation and globalization. It's another serious factor. We are not the only ones uh, on the planet. Belarusian economy is an export-driven economy or export-oriented economy. And besides that advantage that we can export stuff that was made in Belarus, we are also dealing with other players in our markets, from external companies, and those uh, foreign players come more and more, more and more of them are coming. For instance, some Chinese companies are knocking on our doors and they are saying, guys, we can do it in China, we can, say it, uh, we can sell it to you guys in Belarus and you can, you can assemble your parts or complex assemblies and sell them. Well, you know that Chinese goods or Chinese instruments are also benchmarked against the goods uh, produced in Belarus. So China is 8,000 kilometers away or 9,000 kilometers away from here. So you need to take into account the logistics bit to get it here. So it's price comparison. So another example. So from time to time I go to the, fi I go to the fitness gym and there is this uh, sports nutrition, right? So this uh, protein enriched. I have a shop in my adjacent building and I went there often. Then I found a website, Connie Coleman, you know, you know this guy, this is uh, Mr. Olympia, uh, for many years rolling. So I ordered some, some stuff from that website, from that, uh, from that guy. And he sent me as gratitude a movie that he's personally thanking. He was holding a, uh, he, he was holding a shield uh, with my name and thank you for this order to my shop. So this is, in, this is in the illustration that uh, my shop, which is nearby, which is uh, in the vicinity of my workplace, is competing with Ronnie Coleman from, from, from the United States, who is personally thanking me. This is personalized customer service. This competition is going global, really. And those metal structures, something that we are more or less all right, we are more or less safe here today, it could change tomorrow. This stability can go away tomorrow, because somebody else can come to the Belarusian market to sell the metal structures. If Unless we achieve some certain uh, extent of efficiency, we will simply uh, be losing the, the losing side of this uh, battle. We will lose the competition uh, to foreign suppliers. The next trend is the technological development. Literally a few, a few words there. In 2007, I went online for the first time. I, I tried to uh, go to the Metallica website. In the, I went to the Belarusian uh, monopoly, right? So I, I wasn't even able to uh, load this site properly. It's half of it loaded, and then then the computer hung up. The internet was so slow. Now we have internet everywhere. Ten years on, and this is really helping us a lot to boost our efficiency, our productivity. Now to illustrate that the productivity of labor is insufficient in Belarus, let me cite these numbers. So I didn't go too far. The GDP of Belarus is equal to the GDP of Lithuania and Latvia put together. Although Belarus has twice as many population as in the two neighboring Baltic countries. So our two countries are, the, well, they're very low in, in terms of productivity in the European Union uh, rating. Our productivity is even two times lower than those, uh, those uh, countries that are lagging behind. So we do have room for, uh, room for improvement. We do have room for improvement and the answer to this uh, challenge is uh, obvious to me as a business owner. We need fewer people to produce more goods, which means more automation. And this can be done through the cost reduction as well. Here I would like to illustrate how the metal structures factory could look like. So here goes, in a nutshell, really. So out here we can see automatic, automated factory. It's automated. In here you see the saws. Then there is this drilling, marking, scribing. Uh, sand, uh, sandpapering and there is some uh, line of uh, 
sheet processing, metal sheet processing. Uh, this factory can be completely free of operators. These operators are only feeding the um, raw materials from the warehouse, from the stock. And uh, there can be some exit uh, quality assurance control. That's, that's only the, the two only sections uh, where manual labor uh, can be applied, uh, operators can be applied. These automated factories are rare these days, but the tendencies are to have more and more of those. It's possible to have the uh, production fully automated. In the United States, the first factories of this kind are already com commissioned. They start working. And this is only possible with the use of the software that we're talking, discussing about, uh, discussing today. So these metal structures are supposed to be constructed properly in the proper software. In the right kind of software, they need to go to the uh, factory planning and factory management uh, software, like my colleague has just shown. And then this uh, production jobs or fabrication jobs are created uh, that go to the center which is supervising the, uh, the machinery. This is the current trend. This is, this is the tendency that we observe now. Again, from my previous uh, example, 10 years ago, internet was sluggish. Right, so uh, it's, it's actually 1997, but uh, in 1997, so it was 20 years back, not 10 years back, although 2007 was ex expressly mentioned. So 20 years back, internet was not around uh, to the extent we know it today. 20 years back, the factories were not this kind, were not something like that like this. Also there is this, uh, not, not even welding robot, but plasma robot. So these kind of factories can take a beam, a square profile, any other section, any other shape, they can saw it, they can mark it, they can scribe it, they can uh, carve out all the necessary details, all the necessary parts, all the uh, market requirements can be met uh, until the quality assurance at the, uh, at the point of exit. So this is the area of uh, part production, then it's assembly or welding. We have a ready-made solution here as well which is currently used in Ukraine, I guess. There is a, uh, there is a factory in Ukraine that is using this already. So, uh, ZB, Zeman company, that you guys know it. The one that is uh, also a partner with FeeChep uh, in this, in this uh, regard. Uh, assembly and welding of, uh, of steel structures. In here, the idea is about Tecla models, uh, the ones that have the welding information as well, the weld information as well. Uh, they can be used as a basis for the creation of the management pro programs or algorithms for these robots. So also, very briefly, I'll, this is a transition to my next topic. Maybe I'll skip to the middle. I was asked to keep to the schedule, to the agenda. So. So this is how it looks like, these welding robots, these plasma robots were something futuristic only 10 years back. Some first pilot projects might have been started in 2007 or around that time. In the coming 10 to 15 years, we're going to observe, we're going to, to witness more and more of those coming into our daily life. Right, so the advantages of this sort of equipment, so I, I shouldn't even start talking about that because you guys know about it. This is expected output, this is precision. If there is software, if there is algorithms and everything has been calculated properly, the robot will simply comply 100% accurately. No manual scribing is required. All those uh, cardboard pay, uh, templates that you can see in many places, they are going away. It's, it's becoming obsolete. 
It's like some dinosaur dream or something. It's no longer there, those uh, cardboard templates, I mean. All right, so that's how it is. You, you, can, you can really watch it for a long time, but we have a time limit to keep to. So like the water is flowing, it's like the fire is burning and other people working. The three things you can work in, uh, you, you can watch infinitely. But anyway, these are the bits or these are the types of works uh, that can only be possible through the automation software that we're talking about now. Another thing I should mention now is that this uh, fully automated factory, there is this Zeman company with this wonderful robots. I just showed, showed you a brief movie from Ukraine. But this does not mean by default that we need uh, to go uh, to, to, to make you to take huge loans and to buy and construct the fully automated factory, fully automated plasma robots uh, for welding and so on. This full automation can, can be a costly thing. Uh, essentially, it's not the case. Now, currently, there are various levels of automation at the enterprise level. So, what I'm saying that we can say is CNC. Uh, machine, we can see a, we can have a whole line with CNC. We can have a factory with CNC, and there is a there are specific segmentations down that line. Also, that goes for software. We could have zero software, or we can do it old school like paper. We can uh, use a ruler and those cardboard templates. Those those can be used as well. Something some mark markings, uh, some scribing can be uh, can be done old school. That's one way. The same way was uh, Tecla or Pro Steel Projects uh, PLM or some ERP automation can be involved. The one that is going to have all these issues resolved, maybe with, with some uh, accountancy programs, uh, accountancy software as well. This automation can be very different. And the factors that can affect the extent of automation, the scope of automation can be different. And these sort of systems, or working according to the new concept, working at the le uh, world level or global level concept, it will change the organization of labor processes. It will contribute to a better efficiency of labor, better productivity. You need to proceed from the scale or from the from the uh, uh, from the size of the market. Each of these automation purchases, each of these automation. Uh, endeavors needs to be very carefully calculated. It cannot invest a lot of money to just have uh, this uh, strong, huge factory without a sales plan, without even knowing who, who, who the ultimate uh, user will be. Uh, in Belarus, we have examples of the kind where the money has been invested, the public money has been invested, but there is no sales market for those huge factories. Every investment should be carefully considered. The degree or extent of automation also depends on your final business sales plan, on the demands of your customers, and you're supposed to find those customers in the first place. Market stability is also a big factor. Uh, availability of loans and the cost of these solutions is also a huge factor. It can, it can differ, differ from country to country. But uh, as a company, the precise force is pre prepared to consult, to advise the manufacturers to uh, help them select the necessary automation level, to help them pick the right software solutions for their enterprise. The fact that these uh, software, it's not some miracle works, it's, it's not the case. Those are very specific tools that need to be used in a very specific way. And the person that is buying some software product, they are supposed to be trained to work in it. I don't know, some 20,000 euros. That person uh, uh, thinks that uh, investing 20,000 euros, he wants to achieve, achieve the return on investment, like 40,000 euros. We can show you the kind of calculation, we can show you the real life examples of this ROI from different companies, from Russia, because European Union, or maybe in European Union, and you, you'll be able to pick the right solution for you. So we can help uh, advise you guys. But another point is that uh, you need to really understand this, that this is a way uh, that is the only way to go and you will need to spend time working on this solution. And the people that would like to uh, work efficiently will need to dedicate time, money and resources uh, to have this done, to get this done. So first they will need to wrap their heads around this concept, how, how, how well this software meets their requirements what specific objectives will be resolved by this software and how, how exactly the software piece or software suite will help them. Something else I would like to point out, this next fact. I would like to focus your attention on the European Union market. 
and uh, the next bit. So this market uh, with these software components in place and with the uh, equipment that we supply, Belarusian companies automatically become competitive in the framework of Eurasia. We're talking not just Asia, but also Europe, which is Eurasia. Our clients in the Baltic countries, they work almost fully, almost completely uh, to, to cater for the Nordic countries, for the Northern Europe. So they uh, send stuff to Sweden, to Norway, to the UK. One client is shipping to, to the South Africa. He claimed and he actually sent stuff to South Africa, that far away. So it's not just about Russia. Our company is producing the tools and the uh, instruments that we're successfully selling in the European Union. We've had shipments to Israel. We shipped to UK, to Germany. Or G Germany is a regular client, uh, even more so to the Baltic countries. Poland. So this level of technological advancement, this level of technological expertise can be relied on by the Belarusian companies to export their goods to the European, to the European Union to get this done. So we're also we, 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 we're shipping to Germany, clients from Romania sent to Poland, sent to Germany, uh, South Europe, uh, say Italy, Belarusian market, any other typical market for our conditions. Well, let's say they're not exactly in optimal condition right now. They are lagging behind technology-wise. So having this kind of technology in place, the Belarus can be a full-fledged player on the European market. Okay, uh, duties, import duties. Well, the duties for the instruments are 1.7%. Uh, the import duties to the European Union are paid, you know, when? Yeah, we're talking about metal structures. Steel structures. So I know this. I visit uh, RxM client in Riga. No, so it's not RxM, a different client. So that client is producing big uh, steel structures and it's painting them blue. Then I visit another customer in St. Petersburg. He's got the same stuff and they're also blue. Uh, so who are you producing these materials for? It turned out that I accidentally ran into the uh, two companies in Riga, in Latvia, and in Russia, in St. Petersburg, that are producing uh, to the same, for the same client. They are catering for the same client. And how comes Belarusian companies uh, cannot do that? Because of technological gap. So, our coming here, well, there's nothing scary about us coming here. I really advise, I uh, suggest the companies should give it a try, because competition is fierce. Competition drives you to be more organized, to be less relaxed. You really need to take effort. If an athlete is competing somewhere, so it's a runner or, I don't know, some uh, disc throwing or whatever. Uh, so, if they do not participate in the competitions, they do not how well they run or how, how well they throw these discus. Uh, well, it's uh, about competition. It's about uh, participating in the competition and knowing your actual level. So this game or this sport is very simple, it's earning money. If you're good at earning money, if you're competitive, you can ship to Russia. If you're not that, uh, if you're even more efficient, you can compete with better players, with uh, more technologically advanced suppliers, the Polish producers or Baltic manufacturers. So this is the kind of opportunity that our companies have, the, the ones that are located in Belarus. And this is another. In a very reassuring moment when you can ship elsewhere, not, not just to Russia.